Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, it's important to have the right tool for the job, isn't it? I remember one time when Katie and I were working on our house in Worthington. We were putting a bathroom in downstairs and we were at the point in that project where we could put drywall up and close the room. And that even included the ceilings. So Katie and I did what we thought we needed to do. We got two ladders. She was on one end and I was on the other. And she had one end of the eight foot drywall piece. I had the other resting on my head so that I could put in a couple of screws to hold that piece in place. I'm sure it was quite the sight if somebody came in and, and watched us do that. But you know, we were able to get it done with much sweat and frustration and soreness. So apparently, there's something called a drywall lift. Have you ever heard of that before? Apparently, it's a tool where you can set the drywall on it, jack it up to the ceiling, and it will hold it in place for you while you secure the drywall to the beams. And apparently, you don't have to rest the drywall in your head while you try screwing it into the beam. It's important to have the right tool for the job, isn't it? And it's not just true of drywall lifts, but other things as well. The one question that you have to ask yourself is, what's the job? Because that helps you understand the kind of tools you need, right? If it's demolition, you know you need certain tools. If it's reconstruction, putting things back together, it's another set of tools. So what's the job we're looking at for today? What's the job we have in front of us in Matthew 18, 15 through 20? Well, that's a little bit more challenging to answer because this text has been used in many different ways by many different Christians throughout the history of the church. For example, some people see the job as a way to get rid of other people. Someone has sinned against me, and they've sinned against me for the last time, right? This last time was the straw that broke the camel's back. I found the 491st sin, and Jesus finally gives me that way out, right? All I have to do is go through the things here in this text, and then I can be done. I have to go confront them so that they know how much they hurt me and how right I am. Then when they don't listen to me, I, I get to go bring some friends in on it and we get to gang up on them. Then when that doesn't work, I talk to everyone at church so everyone knows how bad they are and make them feel unwelcome so they never come back. So what kind of job is that? Well, that's some demolition, isn't it? And if that's the job, then the tools you'll need are anger, impatience, irritability, and rudeness. Those tools will definitely get the job done. Now, for other people, they see it, the, the job as a, a way to try their best, right? They're just kind of putting on the best appearance. Someone has sinned against me, and so now I've got to try and go through the steps that are laid out so I look good in this situation. So I try to talk to them just like Jesus says, but there's no luck, right? So I fill in a couple of other people and, and we try to talk, but there's still no luck. Finally, I talk to the pastor to try and, and work through this, but still no luck. Well, I tried my best. I tried all that I was supposed to try and it didn't work, so I guess we're done. It's on them now if they ever want to talk through this. Well, what kind of job is that? It's an abandoned one, isn't it? And if that's the job, then the tools you'll need are indifference, lethargy, and idleness. Those tools will definitely get that job done. Now, finally, for others, they see the job as a way to serve their neighbor. Someone has sinned against me, and because I understand the seriousness of sin, I need to pursue this with them so that they experience the forgiveness that is theirs in Christ. By the way, I wonder which job we're going to lift up today in our sermon, right? So I have these steps that Jesus lays out for me. I try talking with them. 
If that doesn't work, I share the concern with others, a couple of people, so that we are united in our concern. And if that doesn't work, then I bring the church in on it, or the pastor out of concern. And if that doesn't work, well, then I continue to pursue them like they were a Gentile or a tax collector, just as Jesus pursued them in his day, ate with them, drank with them, shared the concern and the love that he had for them, even died for them. Dear friends, what kind of job is that? It's reconstruction, right? And if that's the job, then what you'll need is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those tools will definitely get that job done. So dear friends, what's the job in Matthew 18? Is it demolition? Is it abandonment just so I look good? Or is it reconstruction? It's reconstruction, because that's what Christ does to us each and every day. Because we sin against him daily, don't we? It's not every minute of every day, if not that much, right? And I think sometimes that's being generous. And so what does Christ do when we sin against him? Well, he comes to us directly. Because he knows the seriousness of our sin, and he wants us to experience his forgiveness. And so he comes to us through his word and his law that's written right here on our hearts. And if that doesn't work, then he brings a couple of people with him. People who you may know. People that you may not know. In the hopes that you might see it. And if that doesn't work, then he gets the church involved. Yes, that may mean we're standing at your doorstep one day. But more than likely, it's a lyric and a hymn. It's a lesson in confirmation or Sunday school. It's a question that's asked in youth group or or support groups in the hope that it would lead us back to him. And if that doesn't work, well, he'll keep trying over and over and over again, pursuing us in ways that our hearts and our minds couldn't comprehend so that in the end we experience not only his forgiveness, but also the freedom, the joy, the hope, the strength, and knowing that you are never too broken, that you are never too far gone for Christ to pursue you and bring you back to himself, even if it takes a lifetime. And that's important to remember, dear friends. Because even with the right tool for the job, it still can take a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of effort. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was our bathroom in Worthington. But with the right tool, it makes the job doable and possible each and every day. So let me ask you, what's the job? Not just in Matthew 18, but in your relationships, your friendships, your hurts, your pains, your betrayals, you as a parent, you as a friend, you as a stranger. Is it demolition? Is it abandonment just so we look good? Is it reconstruction? I hope and pray that God would not only help you see the job for what it is, but then give you every single tool you need to complete it. Amen.